What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Smart Money Sundays. I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend. I've got some nice relaxation, done a little bit of your homework, uh, I hope, heading into the week. Uh, if not, hopefully this, this video kind of fast tracks that and helps you out kind of a higher time frame bias and perspective. Now, I'm going to talk about kind of just the majors uh, today, as you all know. Or many of you know, I typically like to trade only the majors myself, although I will still do analysis on all the other pairs and crosses. However, Nate did do a pre-market analysis for CAM over at Trading Nut. So if you kind of want to catch some additional anal analysis on some of the crosses and exotics, then you can head over there. Uh, and so for this one, I'm going to keep it kind of short and sweet and just touch upon the majors, which evidently you know, have finally started to provide some additional clarity in terms of a higher time frame kind of direction uh, and narrative moving forward. So EURUSD, if you paid attention uh, last week, you'll know that I, you know, I kind of talked about how price was going to likely run out this, this kind of short term wick low here, right, and trades deeper into this area of demand before looking for continuations. And sure enough, that's exactly what we got, right? We didn't run out this low, we maintained it, we respected it, and we had that nice expansion to end the week, right? And so signs are, are really kind of starting to point um, in the bullish direction here for these XXX USD pairs, which we'll get into the others in a minute, but we're, we're looking like we're aligning rather nicely for continuations. Right? again, sorry, I sound stuffy uh, my allergies are still really bad but anyway your usd for the here and now right and, and remember higher time frame right remember we're, we are in an overall uptrend at the moment right we're still creating these higher highs higher lows right we are bullish until really until price breaches and closes below our previous low right so we have discounted ourselves. we've started to kind of accumulate in price and we have that kind of one drive, two drive cycle, right? And we're now trading back above that four hour 50 EMA, could be used as nice dynamic support, okay? So I have a couple of POIs here on EU for potential continuations. Um, it's just gonna require the right time and price, obviously, uh, but 1.07, really 1.0740, I'll go ahead and adjust that. 1.0740 is going to be my first focal point here, right? This previous high within market structure, All right? Just retesting that, All right? That's always the first POI is market structure. And then the second for me is going to be this, this area of demand here, All right? Just nice discounted price continuation. All right. And that's really what I'd like to see here on EU. Now that we've traded into our higher time frame level, we're discounted on the higher time frame. We've had that one drive, two drive cycle now. And the same thing is happening really across the board. GPUSD, again, another one that I gave out, talked about uh, last Sunday that played out to perfection exactly as predicted. All right, talking about running out this short term low here, trading deeper into this area of demand. All right, just go back to last week's episode, check it out for yourself. You don't believe me. <laughs> um, but Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Got the reaction continuations, right? And we had conviction and conf confidence behind that because we had our nice, clean, relative equal highs here. We had an area of supply that was unmitigated. All right, and so with GU, we really are kind of at a critical juncture at the moment, right? Are we going to stop in premium price and have another expansionary move to the downside, create a lower low, so price in a lower high and a new lower low, right? Or are we just gonna continue with the overall higher time frame trend and momentum? Right? I will always bet on the higher time frame trumping the lower time frame. Right? So it's gonna take a lot to convince me that we're gonna have a further retracement, kind of A, B into C retracement, right? And then the overall continuation. Right. I, I would be more so inclined to believe that price is just going to break through and continue into new highs. All right, but I could be wrong. That's why we, we have to be ready to react and adapt. This is a strong area of supply. Right, It's a nice flip zone before a massive bearish expansion entered into the market. High volume, full body candlestick. Right, and So we're trading into, into that area now. Right, We could see a reaction, but then ultimately that could also still fail. 
right? So this will be kind of critical to, to watch how price behaves in this area, but just given what we're seeing across the board on the majors, I would expect this thing to continue into new highs, right? And I have a natural, or naturally our POI is just gonna be that intraday retracement coming into 1.2500, right? 1.2500, filling in this inefficiency. Don't really see much of a need to trade any lower. We're efficient all throughout these areas here. We're efficient in price. And so if we do end up trading back down into these, these lows, I would expect that price would just continue lower. All right, so that's sterling. Now over to the Aussie dollar. All right, now this one really has been on a tear the last couple of days. Remember, we traded into a significant area of demand, this daily candlestick, traded right into that, and you can see this very strong reaction back up to the upside. Now, this one, kind of like GU, is also at a critical juncture, right? Because on the lower time frames, we had the liquidity run here, full body candlestick. We created that lower low. All right, and so we're, now we're kind of trading up into that last point of return, right? It's gonna be critical to see how we react there as well. Are we gonna breach? Right, break structure here on the four hour back into alignment with the higher time frames, or are we going to sustain right and create another lower high and another lower low? Okay, so this will be a very critical area to watch. We can obviously look for buys, I think, at least up into this, this area of supply, this flip zone here. All right, so little intraday pullbacks, I think, are good to, to at least buy up into there. And then, you know, it's really a waiting game. How are we going to respond? Right, but momentum certainly is very strong at the moment to the upside after having come at, come down into that area of higher time frame demand. Now, NZD USD, bit of a similar situation as well. We've traded into area of supply, or excuse me, of demand. All right, very nicely seeing that reaction now. And we certainly have a lot of room to potentially fill in to the upside, at least if we're, you know, even if we're going to go short, ultimately, we have a lot of room to make up to get into that nice premium price and get up into that flip zone, right? Whoops. We're seeing that higher low, higher high situation, the one drive, two drive, right? Remember, the third drive is typically most highly probable, right? So I'm still really liking this area of demand here. If we can get that retracement. All right, maybe run out the high. Retracement discount, really 6080, 6070. Continuation up into there. That could be a really beautiful trade. All right, and in fact, that's probably my favorite setup on the majors heading into this week. USD CAD is still in the same boat as last week. We just kind of just trickled down the whole week. We didn't really have much volatility on this one. Um, just go back and watch last week's episode uh, of Smart Money Sundays, where I did talk about the higher time frame narrative and bias. Uh, I don't really want to repeat myself or beat a dead horse with this one, but the overall narrative is looking to the downside, right? Continued bearish pressure. We have significant draws on liquidity, significant pools of liquidity, and we have our higher time frame objective down here at 1321, uh, even deeper potentially into 1.3050. Right, so now, in my opinion, it's just a matter of Okay, can we get that retracement, or at least up into our inefficient pricing at 1.351, and that overall continuation down, looking to target out these sell side liquidity pools. Okay, and it may take running the, the initial pool out before we see that sort of retracement. Or that would be that would still be nice, right? We create that lower low. We just simply pull back into discount, or excuse me, into premium for that continuation. Um, 1.351 is the level there on UCAT. All right, USD Swiss franc, this one, run out a significant old high, right? Nice full body candlestick, closing up into a pool of buy side liquidity. And we've distributed our way down, broken structure since. All right, so this one, in my opinion, look, is looking pretty good. Uh, following the overall bearish dollar narrative, right? So I think if we can just simply pull back up into our flip zone here, right? Demand, failure to create a higher high, right? Breach, break lower, pullback, equilibrium, premium continuation. 0 0.9050 into near 0 0.9080. That's gonna be the kind of sell zone that I'd be looking for lower time frame distribution at the right time and price, which we do teach in our courses, very specific times of day that we should be looking to trade. UJ, really nothing on it, it's just behaving um, 
rather erratically at the moment. We had a nice little buy, intraday buy this week, this previous week, but we just kind of railroaded. We never took out the previous high. So this one, I'm just kind of sitting on my hands uh, for the moment. Uh, I do ultimately still expect uh, Japanese yen weakness. I just think with the dollar weakness we're seeing at the moment, it's, it's holding this one back. All right, so nothing to say there on UJ. All right, so that wraps it up for the majors, guys. Again, if you want to see some of the crosses or exotics, uh, Nate covers those in depth over on Trading Nut YouTube channel with Sunday pre-market analysis. So go ahead and check that out. Feel free to give us a like, subscribe to our channel if you like this analysis. And of course, if you want to learn how exactly we do it, send us a message on Telegram at AerialFXTrading. We'd, we'd be happy to get you involved in our mentorship. Uh, or if you're more so interested in automation side of things, we do pass challenges for our clients as well as funded account management. So if that's something that you're interested in as well, shoot us a message and we'll be happy to get you started. All right, thanks guys. Hope you have a wonderful week. VIP will be in touch every single morning uh, with live updates. All right, take care.